And these things that happens in relationships causes problems. And it's unfortunate, but people want to sanction what God has not sanctioned. Um, um, so I want to talk about God's perspective on spousal abuse. Yeah, this right here is going to be a different kind of message. Might not get too many amens. Uh, might not get too many shouts. Uh, 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 but, 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 but my understanding is the reason why some stuff happened because people don't understand the word of the Lord on it. Uh, so, so there is a word from the Lord on this particular thing here. And, 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 and in case you don't necessarily understand what domestic violence is. It's, 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 it is domestic violence as defined by these folks is, is, is when abuse or relationship is a pattern of behaviors used by one partner to maintain power and control over another in an intimate relationship. In other words, what, what's happening here is you got two people who are quote unquote locked in a relationship because of commitment. And because they're committed to one another, one of them will not release the other one from control and the other one will not leave of their own free will. Now, you need to understand that this type of relationship, there's no discrimination in this relationship. Uh, it, it comes in all shapes, sizes, colors, and hues. It, it doesn't make a difference what denomination or what color you are. It don't make a difference how much money you have. It, it, it finds its way into every type of relationship. And many of us will remember Aretha Franklin, uh, the legendary queen of soul, and the woman whose music reminds us all is that we deserve a little bit of what? Of R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Uh, yeah, Otis Redding couldn't get it quite right, so she took it and she just spelled it out for him. And so the song that was his song became her song, and everybody didn't know that he was the one that did it. Uh, but here's a, a sister who got 18 Grammy Awards, uh, was voted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and, 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 and her her powerful musical talent, one of the things that it always conveyed, I don't know about you, but it always seemed to convey a sense of angst in her voice when she was singing. You could hear deep down there was some pain in her voice and there was someone who recounted the reason that this came up because of a guy by the name of Ted White. Some of y'all might know Ted White. Ted White was the first husband of Aretha. And there was often reports of uh, domestic abuse, visible bruises on her. Uh, reportedly, they say that he roughed her up just before she was getting ready to go into a public act, if you will. And, and, and it caused her to be banned from the hotel where it occurred, jeopardizing her ability to sing for the SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership, on the 10th anniversary. But Franklin was committed to the call. She knew her, her voice and she knew her participation and her presence was significant in order to continue the cause. And so she showed up anyway. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, she showed up anyway and she gave her voice and Mr. Ted White let her know how she felt. And so it's been said, even by Mahalia Jackson, that the reason why she sang the way she sang was because she was talking about that relationship. That's why she could say, all I'm asking is for a little respect when I get home. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Uh, 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 it, was, it was the reason why she could sing that song that I don't love nobody like I love you. Come on, talk to me. Uh, Aretha knew what she was talking about, and it's a situation that many of us... Uh, see and witness, but it's what we call, we silent on it, we quiet on it. Because we don't feel like there's anything that we can do about it even when we see it. Yeah. I find, I find, I find, I find oftentimes that this idea of spouse abuse mitigates against those three things that God calls every marriage uh, every healthy relationship to develop that is unity. There needs to be a sense of unity. We need. We don't have to be the same person, but we are to be headed in the same direction. 
a, 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 a transparency. It, it, that means you know what I know and I know what you know. And we, there, there's no shame in our game. We are naked and unashamed before one another. It mitigates against this idea of oneness, that we are one, not just physically, but spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. We are headed in the right direction. And so God's perspective on spousal abuse has something to say about it by the way that God talks about it in Ephesians chapter 5. Now, I want you to note something here. First of all, the Apostle Paul here is talking about a life that's dominated by one who lives by way of the power of the spirit, a life that is in the heavenlies, if you will. So in other words, we are seated in heavenly places, even though we are here on earth, so to speak, so that God sees us just as if we were in heaven, if you were. So what should happen is we should act like we're already in heaven by what we do on earth. That means we should treat our spouses, watch this, our husbands, our wives, the way that God sees us even now. And so when Paul is talking, he says right here in Ephesians chapter 5, he says, watch this, wives, Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as to the Lord. Now, first of all, I, I want you to know something here that in verses 22 to 24, submission in marriage is defined by your relationship to Jesus, sisters. I want you to notice what the text says. It says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And oftentimes, this, this particular verse is exploited. And his calls to say things that God never intended it to say. But let me put a pin in that for a second. Just say this to you, sisters. Uh, uh, before you begin to jump the broom, before you say I do, make sure that you can. And what I mean by that is it makes sure that the man that you're saying I do has already begun to exhibit or has exhibited those characteristics that worthy of being submission submitted to. But even that, understand that you're submitting to God. Uh-huh. And it's influencing your relationship with him so that, or her, watch this, so that if they say something or ask you to do something that's not within the, the bounds of biblical narrative, if you will, the truth, then what you should do is stop doing it and don't do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that word submissive means to rank oneself under uh, uh, in order to accomplish a greater agenda. And the greater agenda is to make sure your marriage glorifies God. Now, you telling me to do something that ain't glorifying to God, don't mean, I, I'm loose from that. I don't have a responsibility to do that. And I, I shouldn't be doing stuff that's disrespectful to my Lord and Savior. And my husband ought to know that if he's saved. But, oh, that gets into a whole other situation. Because you know how we is when we single, right? We, we gripe. I can't find no man. I can't find him nowhere. I can't find him. Oh, we grab him. He's living and breathing and moving. Come here. Or we grow. We just wait until the Lord send us who we need to have. Come on, talk to me. Let me tell you something, sisters. Anything worth waiting for, anything worth having is worth waiting for. God is working on the man. Watch this, the king. Watch this, the, the prophet, priest, and king in your home. And it takes time to build a Rolls Royce. Uh, yeah, you don't want a guy who don't know nothing about the Lord. You don't want a guy that don't, don't know how to submit to God because if he's not submitting to God, he certainly ain't going to treat you right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. God, he wants you to have the kind of husband that, watch this, he loves you enough to take pain on himself. The text says here, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of of the body, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be subject to their own husbands and everything. And now, now, now he's, he's bringing something out here. He's letting us know that, first of all, your relationship in your marriage yes, is predicated, first of all, on your relationship with the Lord. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, some of us, we are in relationships now where, 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 where we, we got married when we weren't saved. So one of us are not saved. 
And so what happens is every now and then priorities and issues come up. But for the most part, uh, for the most part, things seem to be working out fine. But then there's those of us who ain't married yet. Who need to pay close attention to what's going on in this relationship that you're in. You see, the thing that, that, that courting is, the thing that dating is, is a preview of coming attractions. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he late picking you up, he's going to be late paying bills. Mm. If, 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 watch this, watch, watch this. If he ain't working when you met him, you don't know if he's going to start working after you meet him. You know what they say, right? Romance without finance is a what? Nuisance. Come on, talk to me. And God gave Adam three things. He gave him, first of all, a residence. He gave him a responsibility, and he had a relationship with the Lord. So anybody don't have those three, three strikes, you out. Yeah, yeah, you need to pay close attention to what's happening inside of, watch this, the courtship thing, because whatever's happening in there, it's going to only be magnified once you jump the broom. Say that, Pastor. Lord have mercy. Number two, number two, number two, love and marriage, not abuse, is the dominant act. In marriage. 25, verse 25 says, Husbands, watch this, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Look at that. Love is there twice. And gave himself for it. Watch this. He sacrificed. Come on, talk to me, somebody. That he might sanctify, that is, set her apart. That is, to distinguish her over against everything else. There's nothing more important in Christ's mindset. Then the church, that's it, that's it. He died for the church. He died for people who are his own. He didn't die just for anybody. He died for those who he select, who he called, cleansed, and commissioned, and he distinguished them as a peculiar people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, sisters, what it's saying here is that this man has distinguished you over against each and every other man. Lord, have mercy. Some of y'all sisters know what I'm talking about. Because there's only one person that can turn your head. Oh, yeah. I, I, done, I done seen it. I done seen it. If, 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 Deacon, if Deacon Samuel calls out Doc's name, she's going to turn her head. Deacon McCray calls out uh, 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 Deaconess McCray. She's going to turn her head. There's only one name. That, there's only one voice that they're listening for. And, and there's only one person that they're distinguishing. And matter of fact, matter of fact, check this out. They don't even have to say a name. If they use something else, they say sweetheart, honey, sugar lump, baby. Watch this. They know his voice, so they turn their head. Because he has distinguished her over against everybody else so much so that she knows that's his voice, that's my baby. Not is you is or is you is my baby. No, that's my baby. My baby has called me and I'm turning my head. I'm focusing my attention. And so Jesus has done the same thing with you. He has called, cleansed, and commissioned you. He saved you. So when he calls your name, you say, mm-hmm. And so my sister, what I'm saying to you that if you are in a dating relationship and you can't tell his voice, that's telling you something. He says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water. Watch this, watch this. He's not talking to the sister. Watch, and he gives a purpose clause in verse 6. That he might sanctify, set apart, distinguish, huh, and cleanse it, watch this, with the washing of the water by the word. In other words, he's not judging you by what the view say. He's not encouraging you about what Dr. Phil say. He's not judging you by what Ebony and Vogue say and Esther say. No, he's looking at the word of God. He said, Proverbs 31, there she is right yonder. She is a virtuous woman. Come on, talk to me. Uh-huh, yeah. He looked in the text, and when he encourages you, he's saying, baby, let me tell you what the word of God says about you. I know what the world is saying, but let me tell you what God's word says about you. Distinguishing you over that. Now, why does he do it? Because... He loves you. Yes, sir. Amen. See, when God looks down and thinks about this whole idea of spouse abuse, he knows that one thing is absent, and that is love. My Lord. My Lord. 
Ain't no love and spouse abuse. It's all about power. It's all about control. It's all about how to keep you down. And, there, and, watch, and there's a multi-assortment of spousal abuse. There's emotional abuse inside of spousal abuse. And that is, is when the individual is acting towards you, if you will, in, in, in such a way that they're doing passive aggressive behavior. In fact, there's a term they use, they call it gaslighting. You know, gaslighting is back, goes back in the day when lights were uh, 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 lit up by gas. And what they do, they turn the light down a little bit. And then when the person inquired as to the dimness of light, they say, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. That's strange. You turn the light turned down? How did the light get turned down? Well, what, well, watch this, watch this. Check this out, check, check this out. What people do is when, they, when, when you have a complaint, a legitimate complaint, sisters, if you will, what you say is, what are you talking about, baby? What are you talking about? That's strange. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. What, but I, I never did that to you. I ain't never said that to you. Never heard that before in my life. What are you talking about? Well, they're gaslighting you. Yes, sir. They're not acknowledging an actual statement that you made that is true. Yeah. Oh, amen. They're dismissing it. They're diminishing it when the actuality is true. But I'm like, I'm making you seem like you lost your mind. We talking about you know how you forget things, baby. What you talking about? <laughs> you know, no, I, no, I didn't hit you. No, I didn't say that to you. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, gaslighting you. Yeah. There's also financial abuse. In the midst of domestic violence or spousal abuse. Because now I, I got you on a tether. I want to see everything in your bank account. I want to know what's in there. I want to know what's going in. I want to know what's going out. I want to give you no, only a certain amount of money that you're going to spend. You're going to use. Uh, matter of fact, I, I, need, I need all of your, your PIN numbers for your credit cards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now I know, watch this. I know he's not talking to a sister. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah woo, I, that's not a sister, not the ones I know. But it happens. Emotional abuse, uh, financial abuse, and then, of course, there's physical abuse. And see, some folk, they don't got smart now. They hit you in places where nobody can see them but you. Physical abuse, financial abuse, emotional abuse. All of them are abuses within a relationship. Now, now, now watch this. The Me Too movement really began to explode this year. Began to put everything on blast about sexual abuse in particular. And sexual abuse is a part of that too as well. Uh, I remember I was counseling a couple one time. A couple of couples in fact. And. Uh, the, 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 the husband and wife were going at it. The, the husband was asking the wife to do things that she did not want to consent to. And I remember in marriage counseling, I kept saying, if she don't like it, you can't love it. Uh, if she say no, that meant no now. That meant no yesterday. That meant no today. No, no means no. No don't mean on. She's not, ha she's not dyslexic. She meant no. In, in marriage, yes, even in marriage, no means no. No means, I, when I'm tired, I'm tired. Leave me alone. I'm tired. I'm asleep. I'm tired. Lord have mercy. Help us today, Reverend. Help us today, Reverend. <laughs> but it happens in marriage. And so she, she called me. She said, Pastor Stanley, I need you to talk to my husband. I, pick up the phone. Bro, what, what in the world is going on over there? See, so it happens. Yeah. But spousal abuse has nothing to do yes, with love. It has everything to do with control. Yeah. Love and marriage, not abuse, is the dominant act in marriage. You love your wives. Look what the text says. See, love her so much that you're willing to sacrifice for, to separate her from all this other stuff. Love her. Amen. But number three, Husbands eliminate abuse in marriage three ways. In three ways. Look what the text says, verse 28 to 30. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Watch that. As their own bodies. If you buffet your body, you're to help her buffet hers. If you work out in the gym, you, you, you are to help her work out too. 
if she want to. She might not want to. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you like clothes and she like clothes, make sure you get her some clothes and give her some clothes money. Come on, say amen, somebody. Now, I know some brother right now say, Reverend, stop right there. Stop right there, Reverend. Stop right there, Reverend. <laughs> if, if her car break down just like you shine your car, you, you fix her car just like you fix her, your car. You clean your car, you clean her car. You, you, she need a car, you get her a car. Lord have mercy. Say, Reverend, stop right there, Reverend. Stop right there, Reverend. Stop right there, Reverend. You're killing me up here, Reverend. Yeah, yeah, okay, Deacon McCrane, y'all, y'all have my bags packed so I can just go on out. <laughs> Woo, Lord, have mercy. Yes, sir. Uh, but he says, but he says here, but he says that the first thing you do is you love her. Amen. Amen. You say, you say, Reverend, what do you mean, Reverend? What do you mean? My wife gets on my nerve. Okay, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Let's do it this way. Jesus says, the Bible says that you need to love your enemies. Well, you you say you gonna get along with well, you can love as your enemy. Say, Reverend, say, Reverend, well, you don't, you don't understand. I, 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 the Bible says you have to love yourself. Well, I don't love myself. The Bible says, wait a minute now. You, any man that don't love himself is out of his mind. That's right. Yeah, so, so either way, you got to love her as your enemy. The Bible says you need to love your neighbor as yourself. So either way, you're going to have to love her anyway. It's coming, coming or going. You got to love her. You jumped the broom. You said, I do. That means you said, that means you did it. That means you can So he said, love them. But the second thing he says here in the same passage is, not only that, not only that, he says, he says, he says, so men that love their wives as their own bodies, he that loveth him, his, his wife loveth himself. Isn't it amazing how folk talk about their spouse? And that's another part, verbal abuse. Amen. Verbal abuse. There's, 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 there's two things you don't ask a woman about, her age and her weight. Amen. Amen. You know, you don't ask about her age and her weight. But there's a three letter word that you don't ever want to mention fat. <laughs> if she ever asks you, does this make me look fat? That's a setup. Don't do it. <laughs> the best thing for you to do is, like, baby, you know. There's something here that compliments you just a little bit better. This, find a note. Don't say that word. I'm telling you, you're going to be in the doghouse. Don't do it. But you got some brothers. They spend more time dogging out their wife. She can't cook. She can't clean. She can't. She can't. She can't. She can't. She can't. And you know what the person's saying that you say that to? You crazy. You married. <laughs> Says that you are to nurture her. Amen. Nurture her. The, the idea of nurturing says it means that you are to watch this warm with heat. Yeah. Can I give you an idea on that? Can I help you out with that? My daughter, Lauren, right now, she is the horticulturist. She is the horticulturist in the family. Mm. And so anything that's green, she knows how to work it. And one of the things I notice about it is, is that she knows how to primp and prime and cut and plant and replant and water and fertilize and all that kind of stuff. She, in other words, it takes time to work with a plant. And if you're married, it takes time to do it right. You see, that's why marriage is designed to be a lifetime relationship. Because watch this, everything that you're doing in it, you're learning how to, to maintain, to nurture, to build up, to encourage. It's going to take a lifetime. You know. Now, if you jump ship, guess what? You got to start all over. Yes, sir. So he says we need to nurture her. Amen. Huh? But not only that, he says also to cherish her. Watch that. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, flesh but nourished it and cherished it even as the Lord of the church. In other words, what he does is, is he remembers the right things to do for his body. Yes. You know, for example, 
You know, it, 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 some of us, when we have our, our birthdays, we like to celebrate. You know, men like to celebrate birthdays, too. And so they go get stuff for their birthday. Sometimes they might not get stuff for their birthday. Sometimes they just get stuff indiscriminately. But they get stuff in order to help them feel better about themselves. It could be clothes. It could be tools. Some of us love tools. We ain't never seen a tool we didn't like. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a book addict. I can't be in a bookstore too long without coming out with books. That's a dangerous place to take me. Don't take me to a bookstore. They don't have books anonymous. They don't have that out yet. So, But if they had one, I would be probably involved in that because it, I, I, it, that's an oh new book. Yeah, I'm buying that one. But what he brings out here is that it takes care for you to nurture her, okay, and then cherish her. So you remember anniversaries. You remember birthdays. It kind of reminds me of one time I was at a church and I had one brother, and i never forget this brother. He was standing outside, both he and his wife. They're outside the church. I'm coming in, you know, I'm coming in probably about like 1230, something like that. I'm coming in. And, 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 and so I see he had a pickup truck. So the pickup truck is sitting outside. And so his wife is sitting on the inside of the truck. And he's standing on the outside of the truck. It's his truck. So she says to me, Reverend Stanley, could you please talk to my husband? Yes, sir. So I'm sitting here saying, okay, okay, I can talk to him. What meaneth thou this? Yeah. He turns around to me and said, man, I don't know what she... Tripping out for her, man. I mean, she had like this anniversary thing. It's just all that serious and everything like that, man. I mean, you know, she she's sweating me like this and she talking all this stuff to me like this. Man, I don't, I don't understand all that. I said, okay, bro, I, I got you. It's, the, it's only the day she done gave her whole life to you. Reverend Stanley, what do I need to do? Reverend, hurry up. Run down to the store. Get some flowers, some chocolates. Quick, bro. You might get off the couch tonight. <laughs> no, you, you remember important dates. Just like raising children, one of the things we got to do in marriage is we need to create points of good memories. Because when you're going through tough times, those are things that will bring you through. Uh, God's perspective on spouse abuse has to deal with, sisters, your submission to the Lord. Realize that God hasn't called you to be abused. And God ain't going to call you nothing that's going to cause your body, or your mind, your spirit to be destroyed. God's not calling you to that kind of relationship. And when, as soon as you talk to somebody and you pick up that spirit, God is telling you to beat feet. Amen. Run. As soon as you detect that critical spirit, that spirit that's about the business of controlling you, you need to find somebody else or trust the Lord to find somebody else. But, 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 but love in marriage, not abuse, is the dominant act in marriage. That's what God looks at. Amen. Abuse is not the issue God looking at. Not control, but love. Love should be dominant in your relationship, yes. in your communication. You know, in my relationship, I'd rather not say anything than to say something condemning. Right. Yes, because once you say something, you can't get it back. You might say you're sorry, but you can't retrieve the effects of what you just said. Right. A lot of folks, they, you know, like I said, they just let loose. I don't care. I'm just going to say how I feel. What, you made a mistake. Yes, and number three, husbands eliminate abuse in marriage three ways. They love her. That means you think about her needs more than you think about your needs. That means her needs are way higher than your needs. That means that you sacrifice. Somebody said marriage is about compromise. No, it's about sacrifice. You got to give up something. And then number two, you nurture her. You encourage her. You build her up in the Lord. You think of what the Lord wants 
to say to her through you. Yeah, I know sometimes it's challenging. I know sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes she's talking, she's going on, she's going on, going on because she's worried, she's concerned, she's frustrated. She don't know what to do. And she, she's looking at you and she's saying, I, I don't know what to do right now. Can you help me? And sometimes all you can do is listen. Yes, sir. And that's enough sometimes. Yeah. But then there's other times where you can say, baby, this is the way we're going to go on that. Don't worry about that no more. And you cherish her. You remember her. You celebrate her. Uh, that's what you do. Now, let me give you three takeaways, and we're going to go, go on our way. God gives three words to men about the health of their marriage. First thing, God says this. I'm, I'm, now, sisters, don't get, don't get me wrong. Sisters can abuse, too. I mean, y'all can pull the wheel out of winning brother's sale in a minute. Trust me on that. I mean, you can pop the bubble, pop. Yeah, I mean, y'all can do it. Trust me. But, I'm, but right now, I'm just, we're dealing with the men here. The first word he gives is Savior. Because, brother, there's some things that you are helping your wife with. Uh, there's some things you're helping her with. It's not that you are her cosmic Savior. Uh, but, but sometimes you, you're definitely a Savior in this sense. That you are helping her to be delivered from some of the challenges that she faces. Because you're taking those challenges on. Um, you know, one of the things that I try to make sure I, if I'm available and I try to make myself available, I, I don't like for my wife to be dealing with vendors, yeah. car dealerships, yes, and mechanic shops, yes, and stores, because they have a way of talking in a way that's intimidating. It's not that your wife is not smart, it's just they're manipulative. Yes, sir. And so sometimes you got to let them know, yeah, you, you, okay, you was talking to my wife, but now you're talking to me, and I'm talking for her, so I'm going to handle you right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the next time she show up, you know that I better not do that with her because her husband going to show up. Yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you you saving her in that way. She don't have to deal with that foolishness and that frustration. And trust me, they know. They know if she go get a husband, well, no, nah, man, we, no, I don't want to be here when he get here because he, he got some words for me. He's not going to be using profanity. He's going to be speaking my language, but he's not going to be using profanity. Amen. But secondly, secondly, the other word is sanctify. That is, dis sanctify in the sense is distinguish. Your wife doesn't need to be in competition with anybody Amen. or anything. I mean, I know for me, I mean, my electronic devices, boy, whoo, Lord have mercy. Whoo, Lord Jesus, help, help us today, Lord. I need, now, I do need electronic anonymous. Yes, sir. Whoo, Lord have mercy, because I'm telling you, I'll be on that, I, I, that iPhone, boy. Whoo, I can find out. You know how all my stuff you can do on that iPhone? Well, she shouldn't be in competition with anything or anybody. And then number three, saint sacrifice. So I, I had to sacrifice my iPhone. Lord have mercy. Now, brethren, you, 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 now when you join the broom, you sacrifice your friends and your freedom. Oh, Lord. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You know, they used to have that song, you're in the army now, you're in the army now. You never get rich, you never get rich, you're in the army now. Well, you're in the marriage now, you're in the marriage now, you're in the marriage now. You can't be married and single at the same time. And the reason why a lot of folks fail is because they're distracted. You got, you got the sacrifice. I remember when I first got married, I, I remember some folks said to me, they said, well, Ronnie, what happened to you? I said, I got married. Can't hang out here in the corner with you no more. Amen. As you're standing on your feet today, there may be someone here today who has not been and is not married to the Savior. Amen. Uh, there may be someone here today that does not know the Lord. And so right now, the person that you're married to is an abusive husband. When you wake up with him, you, you have a migraine, you always have a guilty conscience, and he's always controlling you. The 
Bible says this way in Ephesians chapter 1, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 1, that you're led by the prince of the power of the air. That is, the devil right now is your husband. And the devil and you are going on a nice ride right now to a place called hell, where both will ultimately be destroyed. And so I want to say to you today, if you want to jump ship, and leave that relationship and hold hands with Jesus and walk down the aisle with him. This is your time. Oh, yes. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Take over my life and make me the person you want me to be. And the thing about Jesus is, the Bible says that if you call on his name, he will save you. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest, and you shall find rest unto your souls. If you're here today, you don't have the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Come and give your life to Jesus. I can promise you this. He will change your life if you surrender to him. Would you come today and give your life to Jesus Christ? Trust him as your Savior and your Lord. This is your time.